I move for no man. 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 Uh, what's going on, doggies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has uh, has Frankie been partaking in the 420 festivities? <laughs> As it sure seems like. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, that's, right. that's right now. Dude, we don't. It's it's kind of hard to get weed here. Yeah. Is it hard in to get the weed? Dominican in the Dominican Republic, it's hard to get weed. Well, I don't think we have like any of the good shit. Well, that I believe. That I can believe, but I mean, you. <laughs> I mean, don't they don't they funnel like cocaine and shit through the Dominican Republic? Like, yeah, we're we're like yeah, we, uh, <laughs> it's very it's very easy to access like our our waterways. So <laughs> <laughs> we're like so a we hub. We really don't have weed here. We just have the hard stuff. What yeah. about what about <laughs> what plenty of heroin? But <laughs> we got here. crack. We're big in crack. What um what about PR, dude? Uh, apparently it's like a huge thing here. So, so because there's no customs between Puerto Rico and, uh, Miami, um, there's a, there's heavy drug trafficking between the two. Right. So, um, like there, I mean, there's no customs between Puerto Rico and any state, but I guess that's the way that they do it. They funnel it through Miami. So what do you fly into Gary, when you go, go over there, when you get back home, where, where do you fly into? In uh, Puerto San Juan. Okay, and that's like. Are you what, talking like, about when when I yeah. go back to New Jersey, or wherever in the states? Well, when I go back to the states, I either fly into Newark or JFK. Depends on what's available. I try Newark whenever I can. It's you went smooth. to Boston though, this weekend, yes. right? Yes, I oh, did. I flew... was in Boston filming. That old Bean Town. Was that a direct flight from San Juan? Uh, they do have direct flights to Boston. I'm not sure why. It's not an amazing place. Oh. But, dude, honestly, I was there for, like, four days. And, like, I get it. Like, it may not be their best season. It's, like, you know, kind of, like, still winter there and shit. But, like, dude, it was it was fucking depressing, man. I have never appreciated where I, where I am more than fucking spending four days in Boston, man. It is just dark and gloomy every day, no matter what time of day. And it's just – there's no people out. Nobody's nobody seems particularly happy if you do see somebody. It's Look just at Gary the, now. He's like and, the island boy. And the girls shitting the on girls East are, Coast weather. The girls are pale <laughs> yeah. and chubby dude, and they have bad dude. outfits and shitty hair. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> let me talk to you about the fucking girls. So I get to Boston and I just I get right off the flight and immediately my eye it's just I think our brains are just wired to fucking do this. Just, you know, notice patterns, right? So I'm looking, I'm scanning around, scanning around, and I probably go through a group of like maybe 50 to 100 people overall as I'm scanning the airport. And immediately I'm just like, oh, this is what people from Boston look like. It's like 90% old, rich white ladies, okay? And the ones that are, that are young, if they are young, are just wearing like fucking weird like Patagonia shit. And like they all look like they've been fucking – they all look like they've been fucking backpacking in the fucking wilderness. Yeah. Like they don't actually look like they've been backpacking. Like they're right. not rough and tumble. Like they're they wearing, look very delicate, the like porcelain the dolls. Mm-hmm. What's that? They got the vibe. They just have that. Yeah. Like, they just have this vibe. look of like they got like their little you know their little shoulder bag, and it's like it's all um all the colors are like uh, what do you call them when it's like dirt? Um, uh, uh, there's like a uh, there's like dirt. an artistic name for it. Um, <laughs> You're like dirt. When it's like, it's like dirt. It's like, and it's all like grayscales and like. No, there's like a uh, I can't think of it. But when I do, uh, I'll tell you. Anyway, so there's like all muted, that. Then muted, the, muted colors. Muted. The jewelry they wear is like it's like all fucking turquoise rocks and shit, like intertwined with like ugly fucking gold. So that was like an actual. Uh, oh, sorry. pattern you, th- you that you saw like the act- Dude, like a lot of people wearing the same thing immediately it was like oh this is what everybody here looks like my brain has already made the assumption <laughs> and as i looked further into the airport sure enough it was more and more of the same thing as soon as you said boston i just thought ugly girls and people dressed like shit yeah gary was- had when was the last time you went to boston before the pandemic <sighs> it was a while back i guess Maybe I never spent as much time there. I always never really liked it that much. It's just like, 
spending four days or five days there this time was rough, man. Oof. I, I was I was like fucking depressed by the end of it. I mean, also I'm in a padded room for fucking twelve hours a day trying to come up with uh, moves and shit that I'm recording for this DVD. So like that doesn't help. But yeah, man, it's did rough you out there. did you wing it with your DVD or did you have like something uh, something written out? So I always do a little bit of prep. Like I I basically start with questions. So like I ask myself like, hey, like. Um, what are going to be the goals of the DVD? Like, what are, how am I going to differentiate from other people? Um, you know, uh, what kind of, what kind of, uh, philosophical things are going to, are going to be included or like what kind of, um, what kind of sh- like, uh, strategic things are going to be included? Like I ask myself a list of questions mm-hmm. and, uh, as I go through that list of questions and I answer those questions, it starts out, you know, you know how in school they kind of like teach you how to like write a paper or something and you start yeah. with like brainstorming. So uh-huh. it's like mostly just me listing a whole bunch of shit on like paper that like, I kind of want to get done. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I, I slowly funnel that into a more, uh, organized process. So then I'll have like a beginning, uh, a beginning introduction and like some core concepts and, uh, and then I can kind of fill in the gaps, but it's like, it's not like it's not stuff that I do every single day. It's just kind of like, making it more digestible to the average person who's going to go buy this DVD and making it a little bit more organized, uh, you know, my thoughts and stuff. I would say this was my least organized DVD. I didn't do as good of a job as the previous ones at uh, kind of compartmentalizing the information. Um, but, I mean, it's still going to be a good DVD. It's on leg locks. So a lot of people are going to be interested in it. Um, mm-hmm. Our team has done stuff like that before, um, but I've submitted like a lot of people um, with leg locks specifically. So there okay. definitely people are going to be looking out for, uh, for this DVD for sure. Your opponents. <laughs> they will learn sure. all your tricks. Be like, none of his opponents speak English, so they're going to have to get it. <laughs> yeah. Chris, are you injured? No, I just got Why? a little, uh, little compression. I have what's called uh, golfer's elbow. Oh, so, I have, I have something that's called tennis elbow. Yeah. Tennis elbow is on this wearing. side. Golfer's on this one. I've been ripping left hooks, fucking people up. So this yeah, has been me bothering too. me. You, you, you do? Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Sometimes that bothers it, me like a lot. Is there a lot of swelling involved in the in the elbow? Yeah. So I get like like there's this little like ball that will pop. I out think I might have golfer's uh, testicles. Then. <laughs> <laughs> there's swelling coming that, out of the side. How does that work? They, it's a little ball that's that. <laughs> they become huge. Did you guys uh? You guys see the fight? Which one? Which one? Come on, Which man. One? Fights. The one fights. that people are talking the most about. The one that wasn't a fight? <laughs> oh, the, the, did the you guys see the, the Okay, okay. Let, let me put it say? Let me put it this way. Least? Hey, did you guys see the fight that broke out at the Justin Bieber concert? <laughs> 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 that was perfect. Wow, you, that's line of the week. Let me ask you this, Frankie. Did you write that joke? Have you been saving that up for I us? Did. I hope you did, did. Somebody else write that joke? No, I think I saw it. I saw someone on Twitter say something like I, that. I knew it. I knew it. It was. It was. It was something like, um, uh, "How weird was it to see fights that no, like a Justin Bieber concert and then fights in between, some shit like that." Yeah. All right. Mine All was right. better. So I'm. I'm expected to believe that you're responsible for that beautiful joke. I don't know. Well, I mean, not the concept, but we the delivery. My delivery was better, not the concept. I all right, all right. Concept. Fair so, enough. Fair. I did not expect that. There wasn't that. much to see, but. I did not expect that. I did. I did, I did the uh, uh, the Menace and the Man show uh, last week, you, and he was. With Vinny? Uh, no, Vinny wasn't on when I when I did it. Uh, Craig oh, Jones no, no, was Craig. on. Yeah. And how uh, Menace how'd was you end up doing I know Dennis Bermuda's like forever. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he was like, he was like, Chris, he was like, I'm going to bet on, on Askren. And I'm like, well, what's the line? And he told me, I'm like, nope, don't. Nah, the don't. odds weren't even good. No. Like, I was, was like, no, if they were, if there they were huge. Good odds for either guy, really. Nah. I mean, he said, he's like, oh, but, you know, Ben's got that kind of weird, you know, he'll put his hands out. I'm like, that doesn't work on boxing. He's like, yeah, but it worked in MMA. He never got knocked out. I'm like, it doesn't work on boxing. And I, I literally said, Lennox Lewis knocked out Hasim Rahman in the rematch. Same exact thing. He put, he did the long arm defense. Lennox went right over the top and overhand right, knocked him out one punch. That's exactly what happened in the fight. 
Dude, he lasted less than the Nate Robinson dude. Yeah. I, I mean, feel so bad for the guy. It's really not that mind blowing when you when you really think about it. Like when you really look at it, you know, and, like man, if you okay, so mixed martial arts by the nature of the word, right? We have a collection of different martial arts that everybody's practicing per se, and they're all entering into this sport. But the sport itself is winnable. Like it's you're you're capable of winning even titles without having to master anything. every single martial art. Right. You know what I mean? Like without actually being able to be a boxer. Like there's a lot of people that if you put them in even an amateur boxing match that fight mixed martial arts that would get knocked out or fucking wouldn't do well. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And yeah. they li- like he literally picked maybe the worst boxer in all of mixed martial arts. And on top of that, the dude just got a hip replacement. Yeah. So like yeah. – what was anybody really expecting? They're like, oh man, but he's a professional athlete. And a professional, like, I don't know, man. If, like, if I, if the average person trains in wrestling and then, uh, and then does a wrestling match with a fucking professional tennis player, yeah, I mean, they're probably that was the exact, still going to be exact, the professional tennis player. That was like, the exact example I got. I'm like, hey, listen, I'm a world champion, I'm a good athlete. If I go and play tennis against the top 100 guy, I'm getting smoked every so single are time. You, uh, are you comparing Jake Paul to a top 100 guy? He's probably like a top 500 guy. Okay. He's not bad, honestly. He's just, but. Well, we haven't really seen much, right? Wow. But it, but again, he's not bad. I've seen him spar. I've seen him train. And I said that to, to to Dennis when he was talking about betting on Askren. I'm like I'm like, no, this kid is is a boxer more than Askren is, and he should he should smoke him. And he seems to have some pop. Yeah, he does. He does have that. It looks like. Did you guys hear uh, Snoop Dogg talking shit on him? On Be- on. On Ben uh, Askren when he came he? out with that, like, yeah, he's a he's I like, look at this even... motherfucker with a nineteen fifty style, hands out and shit. Man, I was so upset. I paid for that fucking stream. So, so I'm sitting down. First of all, we're watching. I know I'm fucking retarded. What was I? Thinking? <laughs> So first of all, we're all sitting down and we're Wait, watching you paid for uh, it? the OJ oh. Simpson trial. Like there's like a thing on Netflix. Like they do like a, it's like a 10 part series or something on the OJ Simpson trial. I fucking loved it. We were on like episode seven or eight. I told my friend Wait, to come Cuba over. Gooding Jr.? Yeah. I told Dude, my that, friend to, it killed. Amazing. It's so good. Oh, I got to watch it now. So amazing. Good. Chris, amazing. So, especially for somebody like me who wasn't a part of that era to know like what the trial was like. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure it would be good for anybody, but I don't really know any details of the trial other than like the glove part. Like, <laughs> I don't really know shit about it. So it was a whole new world to me of all kinds of interesting information. Yep. The most interesting thing I, I found in that whole thing were these, uh, the Furman tapes, were these mm-hmm. tapes of this detective yeah. of literally going on this crazy racist rant. Yep. Like it's all recorded. The fact that this guy, it's not, it's not that crazy that there's Mark a racist Furman. that's a police officer. Like, I mean, there's racists all over the place. It's not like I, I think there are no racists in the world. But what's crazy is that this dude literally let somebody record him saying these heinous things where he's talking about like, um, you know, beating fucking uh, people that are innocent and framing them and fuck all kinds, all while using the, the worst racial slurs you could possibly think of for everybody. It's just, it's nuts. So anyway, sorry to get back into the point. So I'm watching that, and then I remembered, oh shit, the fucking Askren Paul Fight thing is, is today. Up. So you shut so, off something good to put on that bullshit. Yes, and I'm like, okay. And then I realized on top of that that they that there was UFC fights after afterwards. And after watching like 30 minutes of just like a weird concert with nobody in it, <laughs> and like you know what I mean, like you're, it's like a concert with no audience, and and then somebody getting slapped unconscious. I was like, okay, I can't watch this anymore. Flipping over to the UFC. And I started watching the UFC fights, but I, I wasted my fucking fifty dollars. I'm pissed. Ouch. I read about you it. Have, you should have split it with your roommates. Yeah, fuck. They don't. <laughs> the UFC fights were good. Yeah. Oh yeah, good fights. It Did was, you see uh, it? Whitaker and this... Gastelum, right? Yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah. see it, but uh, I'm a, I'm a great. big fan of Whitaker. I'm actually a big fan of both those guys. Whitaker dude. and Gastelum pretty much are always a good. Whitaker fighters. looked really good. He's a beast, really dude. Gastelum brought the fight to him. He was like he does. in his face, fighting hard, but um, it seemed like Whitaker had uh, more more weapons. You know, mm-hmm. he was more diverse in his like striking arsenal. Yeah, 
It was too much. He overwhelmed him. Really, really good um, setups with his rear leg. You know, he's going from body kicks, inside thigh kicks to head kicks and uh, hit uh, Gasolum clean on several occasions. He only started blocking the head kicks like very late in the fight. Dude, Would yeah, you guys yeah. say that that was the one of like the most dominant losses for Gashlin because he's yes. tough with everybody? Yes, I was just thinking about that actually. Yeah, I, I don't think even against um, Adesanya. Adesanya, like he yeah, didn't, he, was he, in that ta- he tagged actually, us. He had some good some moments more. against yeah. Adesanya. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he didn't really have very many good moments against Whitaker, man. It was no. it was That's every interesting. once in a while he'd land a jab, a rear hand, and nothing nothing hit really hard, and he like. Anytime he tried to take him down, Whitaker either shook him off or, or you know, reversed or whatever. And he held him down kind of at will and was throwing shots, you know. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of both of them, like you said. But, uh, yeah, it was a really dominant performance. Uh, you don't usually see uh, Gaslam in fights like that. No, he's, he's, he's like a litmus test for everybody. Like, yeah. Unless you're, unless you're the tip top, he, he's beating you. I think Adesanya has Whitaker's number, though. I yeah, think he's I, always going to be number two. He's got fucking everybody's number, except well, when he moves, except when he moves up and wait fights that gigantic fucking. It will on. be interesting what people do with the information that they now have, which is that if you can pin Adesanya down, he doesn't really have a lot of answers. You know, I think that's something. I know that the last guy he fought was much bigger, um, but it wasn't like it didn't. It was not clear that he had a plan to get back up like a way, a process of which he was going to get back up to his feet when he got pinned down by that guy. And I think anybody that, that understands that will be able to exploit it. Well, if I think capable, if they have yeah, the skills. Exact, if, if they're capable, because yeah, his, get, take, gotta, his takedown them. defense is ridiculous. Yes. The, the like not even takedown defense is great. Yeah, exactly. He's so long, you know, he's so long and sharp. He puts guys on their heels right away because yeah. his counters and his length. And it's just hard to get that close. Yeah, he does a really good job um, with his footwork of always kind of ne- like not getting com- like pinned against the fence, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and not not getting caught with like uh, these guys that are like blitz fighters and stuff like that, you know. Well, yeah, he's got really good lateral movement. He's able to yeah. cut that angle, move around the cage, circle, and then he's got those fucking knees that can come from anywhere. Yeah. Gary, you know, there's a season two for the um, the OJ series. It's called I, An American Crime Story. I didn't know that. Yeah. What is that about? Um, I can't recall right now, but I know that it was good. And then I got I got another series for you that's like really good too. Okay. Uh, who do you guys think uh, Jake Paul should fight should fight next? Um, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know he's gonna do it, so. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. He flirted with the idea of of doing an MMA fight with somebody. I know yeah, he said not, that. I don't not, think it's gonna happen. No though. shot. He's not gonna no do shot. it. He'll stick to boxing. He's, he's found Dana himself White, a little niche. Dana White came out uh, being kind of like a crybaby, saying that he was going to sue um, Jake Paul. So he stops, like, fucking with the UFC and calling people out that everybody's under contract. Wow. He's pissed, man, because they were, like, talking shit. Him and Snoop were talking shit on Dana White after the fight. I mean, like, they Dana, should. Dana was my one million dollars, motherfucker. Dana thought that Askren was going to win? Dude, he, you didn't hear the interview? Dana was, I think, it might have been on Rogan, but he, I'm not sure what it was on, some podcast, and uh, Dana said, uh, I, I bet you a million, oh, I think it might have been Mike Tyson, Tyson. Tyson's yep. podcast, and mm-hmm. he said, I bet you a million dollars, like he was that confident yep. that uh, Aspen was going to win. Dana, you so, should have called me, bro. I, I had the inside scoop. He um, even uh, arranged for... For Ben to go uh, train at Wildcard for a week. He was the one that set, set that up. A week. Well. Same. You know. <laughs> going to train for, train, train for this fight for one week. Because he looked like it physically for sure. One week. Sure. Yeah. So the the series that I was saying, it's called Dirty John. Oh, that's a good that's a good one. Did you see it, Chris? I've seen that. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. So there's season two as well. So it's I actually, I, I listened Dirty to Betty. that on, on a podcast on uh, Wondery. The dirty, yeah. it's way better than the show. The oh, real story is fucking nuts. Yeah. Dude, it's amazing. It's with uh, that really good actor called Eric Bana. Bana, yeah. He, he's like an Australian. He was uh, the first Hulk, I think. Mm-hmm. The shittiest Hulk. Oh, he was, uh, he was um, uh, the dude in Troy. The, the, uh, the yes. King. Uh, Achilles. Or the king, was he the king? No, not Achilles. Like he was um, 
He was the one that fought that fought with with Troy. Yeah, he, uh, outside he the castle. Beat him at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, you remember that fight scene that was fucking. Oh epic? yeah. So he had, that's he had a guy. cool name too. I'm, that's gonna bother me. So yeah, you should check that out, uh, Gary. Yeah, Gary, that's 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 a good show. I'm gonna watch. Game. I'm gonna watch the OJ one. You watch the Dirty John one. All right. I'm in. Gary. So how come um, when GSP went over to train with you guys, he only stayed for like such a short amount of time? Like He's what, a what was dude, a... man. <laughs> He's like filming movies and shit. You know? Dude, you know where I saw him? Um, He'd be great in movies. I saw him in the first episode of the uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, that's what he's doing, I think. I don't think he's back, though. What character is he? Um, I think he was the same dude in... Um, I think he played the same dude in Captain America. That Frenchman that was like a, like an assassin. Yeah, yeah I mean, he doesn't yeah. have a lot of range when it comes to uh, what what kind of what character he can. He's got to be a French guy, a Canadian guy. His accent's so Yeah, they don't there. give him any speaking rules. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Arnold Schwarzenegger found a way to make it work. Yeah, he there. sure did. <laughs> yeah, fair point. And Gary, so when's your instructional dropping? They wanted to put it out fairly quickly, so I'm, I'm sure it'll, it'll come out soon, probably within the next month or two. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so it'll be good. Excited about that, for sure. Um, hopefully, I win the title, and then I can come out with a an MMA instructional next. When's your fight? Uh, nothing is set in stone yet. I'm still waiting to sign a contract, but... You know, supposedly I'm supposed to be next in line for the title shot. So it all depends you, on uh, all depends on the other guy, I think. I mean, I pretty much told him I can fight whenever. So but supposedly you, it should be soon. Are you already like uh, ramping up training? Or? Yeah, I'm, I am okay. starting training as if I'm in fight camp right now. But I don't know. I, I can't be. I, it's not confirmed, you know. So I'm just going to train. I mean – to be honest, I pretty much train like I'm in fight camp most of the time anyway. But what I won't do is like I won't take trips home. I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna like leave. I'm basically just gonna commit to training, you know, mm -hmm. completely. Um, so uh, that's the only real difference. It's not like I'm not training every day anyway, you know. So how big has your team gotten over there? Because from from like all these podcasts and everybody like talking about the Danaher Death Squad now moving to Puerto Rico, I'm sure like you guys are getting. A bunch of people flying yeah, in. Yeah, huh? so we we have de we definitely have gotten people come over. Um, specifically, it's been great to have a couple guys um, come down from like TriStar and a couple guys from Henzo's that were MMA guys that have come down. Uh, some some have stayed consistently, and then other ones are kind of like in and out. Um, so that's been great. Um, but as far as consistent guys on the roster that are like showing up every day and like have moved here officially. Um, I mean, I'd say we probably have like 10 dudes, maybe a little bit more, maybe like 12, 14 tops, um, that are like officially like in Puerto Rico and staying in Puerto Rico. The thing is, is we got to keep it kind of small right now because we don't have our own gym yet. So we're working out of somebody else's gym and they can only house so many people at once. So like, yeah, there's a shit ton of people that want to come and train with us obviously, but we can't, it's not like when we were working in New York and we had like a much bigger gym where we could let like a mm -hmm. lot of people come in. Also we're, we're, you know, John's no longer teaching a, you know, recreational jujitsu class. Like it's a, it's a full it's on just, professional, just professional class, you okay. know, like we're literally just, we do our MMA Killers. session in the, in the morning and then we do our, uh, our jujitsu session in the afternoon back to back with like a half hour break in between. And uh, it's all professionals. Like, there's nobody in there that's just dicking around. You know what so I mean? What, They're all people. What, what about, like, um, do you guys have any striking coaches or wrestling coaches? Not really. John's kind of a one-man show when it comes to that, man. I mean, we definitely get uh, we definitely get guys coming in that are, like, uh, higher levels. Like, obviously, like, George came in, you know, and he was helping me out with some stuff. And um, uh, there's been, like I told you, there's some MMA fighters from TriStar uh, that came down and, and things. But... Uh, we don't, we have never really brought in, like, as far as MMA is concerned, like I've never really brought in like a striking coach. Uh, I work with this guy, um, occasionally who's going to be coming down to help Ryan Benoit, um, uh, prepare for his fight. Um, Jamie, um, and Jamie is, has, was a kickboxing coach at Henzo's for, uh, for a while. And, uh, he, uh, I've worked with him, but like, they, he kind of like works with John, you know, like they work together, like, uh, back when we were at Henzo's, they do different things and, you know, they would run practices together and stuff. So I've never had like, um, somebody come down that was like a, a boxing, you know, expert or anything like that, you, you know, guys, cause Chris just mm -hmm. keeps, 
Chris just keeps not answering my fucking text messages. So, you know, yeah. that's, that's, he does that <laughs> to everybody. Hey, for, for everyone listening, I'm just holding out for the right money. I've been <laughs> around. I know, how to, I know how to do this. <laughs> hey, guys, if you've been enjoying our content and want to help us out, hook us up with a review on iTunes and subscribe to our channels, YouTube and iTunes. Thanks, Gary. So what's like your plan with Puerto Rico? Do you have like a plan or? Are you just winging yeah, I mean, it? We're or? supposed to be opening a gym, I guess. I don't really, I'm not involved with it though. So I don't really know what the holdup is with everything. I mean, we saw a location, like I did go to a spot that it was supposed to be. Um, but to my knowledge, there's been kind of a stall on like the actual process of building the gym. So I mean, I'm for saying, now, the plan is just to continue like to train. Your, your living situation, like, is this like, do you want it to be like more of a permanent thing or, or not really? I mean, I, I mean, dude, as long as the team's there, it's permanent for me, you know, mm -hmm. um, as far as like how long I see us being there. I mean, I see us being there if we do actually open a gym. I think yeah. we're there a minimum of like three years, okay. and if not more. And then uh, if we if something, you know, goes haywire and the gym doesn't open, I don't know. It's hard to say. I would imagine we'd probably stay out the year while, uh, you know, and let everybody's uh, leases finish or whatever. But I mean, I, I'm pretty confident that that we're going to kick something off here eventually. Also, man, COVID restrictions are getting crazy over here again. So, I mean, sure. who knows? We'll see what happens. It'd be sick if you guys could set up like a like a fight hub over there, kind of like Tiger Muay Thai in Thailand, yeah. where it's like a destination yeah, where people, you know, can go over there and train and and also like have a vacation at the same time. Yeah, I think that's part of the draw, man, for sure. Once we have our own gym. Gary, you said like you're not doing like regular classes right now. So, so what do you have sponsors taking care of, of the gym, like finances? Like how are you guys keeping the gym? Oh, open? so like like the so like the guys that don't make uh, as much money and stuff. Yeah, I mean we got we got sponsors and stuff helping them out. Um, you know, as far as the gym that we're training at is concerned, um, we're just working out of uh, Combat 360. It's just like a, a local MMA gym in the in the area. I think it's originally like a Muay Thai gym, but they hold other martial arts classes there and stuff. So. Dude, so how did it? Uh, how did you guys contact those people? Who? The the gym that people you were working training at. With? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Mo Jasm helped out with all that kind of stuff, so he okay. kind of organized all this. So I'm assuming he had a conversation with the guy Juan who uh, owns the place. Dude, can you imagine like the Danaher Death Squad like entering a local Puerto Rico gym of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they would like fucking, fucking everybody up. shit their pants, dude. <laughs> I would love to be like a fly on the wall and have them do that. Like, I'd hey rather guys, see what's you guys up? Go into a Can we bar, train here? Get uh -huh. banged up and then start a fight. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that'd be a lot more interesting. <laughs> I'd like to have like um like Road a hidden camera. Style. We should you mean, we Chris, should do that watch as that a prank. Than Paul fight? Is that what you're saying? We should do that as I'd a prank. What? I'd rather watch you shave your taint than a fucking Jake Paul fight. <laughs> that can be arranged. We'll do that the next time. <laughs> Chris. Yeah. What's going on with your career, man? Are you done? Uh, no, no. We're looking at June 5th. I'm waiting on a, I'm they similar, keep on I'm a similar pushing situation. back your shit. Why can't you help on in one of these fucking Triller cards? Triller. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe that's what I'm doing. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. June fifth. Waiting on the. Uh, I'm, I'm. I'm in a. I'm in a similar circle pattern like Gary is right now, trying to holding pattern rather. Get waiting for my contract. Dude, you're like tight now with Eddie Hearn and shit. That's your boy. Dude, I'm tight with everybody. I work for ESPN. I work for Hearn. I work for De the Zone. I called. I actually called out uh, Adrian Broner and Oscar De La Hoya on air over the weekend. Yes. Didn't get a lot of didn't get a lot of uh, not, not a lot of traction on that. Especially because De La Hoya later that night looked like he was stoned and oh drunk. Oh my god! Did you guys see that? Yeah, yeah. Thank Gary, you. No. I'm gonna send you. Okay. Because I, you I told to you look. I tuned out of that stream real fucking quick. I didn't even Look. when the actual fights on that fight card were happening. I was already watching the UFC. Thank God. Okay, so for everybody that's listening, go on to YouTube and write Oscar De La Hoya, Triller Drugs. And that's yeah. it. Wow. It's fucking hilarious. The guy is so out of it and talking all this shit. Like he's, it's like whenever I get shit faced and I know that I'm shit faced, I don't try to be loud <laughs> because I know that I'm going to be a jackass. Like how does someone not realize that? Cocaine is a hell of a drug, Frankie. Yeah. As they say. It's not, that's the thing. It's not just booze. It's the coke and the booze. So you get that like when you do the coke and you get all 
fucking jacked up and like you feel like you're the man and then you're doing booze and you say stupid shit you get a yeah i will say even when i'm very incoherent his face was all puffy and shit he looked like he was sweating it was was bad luck wow dude and then there's there's this one point where he's like he's like staring like this like this (laughs) his eyes are all like bug-eyed and he's like it looks like he's gonna have a heart attack that's amazing cocaine's a hell of a drug Oh my God! I can't believe he's coming back. I don't. I, I mean, after that, I don't think he is. Because if he's if he's still using, he's not gonna make it to a fight. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't sanction that if I was like the athletic commission. Because he's <laughs> not just a regular like party boy. Like he's he's an addict. Like he does drugs hard. Yeah. From what I hear, though, he's shopping around offers to take fights with a bunch of different people. Yeah. No, they've been shooting. They're talking. I've heard. Uh, he was Eddie in the Alvarez commercial was talking about it for Triller. Um, so they're yeah. obviously like they're obviously like if they put him in the commercial, those guys are serious about him fighting for their like organization. Yeah, for sure. I've seen, I've seen pictures with him and and the uh, the guy who runs Triller, this guy Kavanaugh. Um, okay. They've been on, on each other's Instagrams. I'm curious about the whole Craig Jones and Gabby Garcia thing. Gary. Yeah. Do you, ha- do you know yeah, anything what about, about that? What I about mean, it? I thought it was going to happen. I was like really it looking was, forward to it. It still is. I think that they got an offer for a lot of money to do it in Uh-oh. a forum, to do it somewhere where it's going to be a little bit more professional. So, so why don't they I just they say decided that? to postpone it? Yeah, I think that's why they did that press conference and shit. Oh, okay. Because they were originally they were supposed to fight, and then I think they got like a big offer to do it elsewhere. So I think that's what's going on going on. And now Craig Jones, by the way, is um, he's doing the Ultimate Fighter show now. So he's going to really? be one of the coaches. Oh, yeah. nice. For who? For who? Uh, for what the fuck is his name? Uh, uh, Volkanovski. Yes, Volkanovski. Volkanovski. Yeah. So they were. Yeah, they were both. Oh, when I did that, the Medicine of the Man show, they were. They were both on that show. Volkanovski really? and, and Craig. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. Volkanovski oh, were... is from. Is he from Australia? Right. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. from Australia. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, Craig's from Chris. there. They probably thought like it'd be a good mix. Yeah. How did uh How did that dynamic work out with five dudes? Well, no, so, so Volkanowski was on first. I caught the tail end of his, then okay. I had my own time, and then I did the beginning of Craig. Okay. So we, we just kind of overlapped and kind of tagged him. So, but what, what was, it was four guys at a time. Uh, I've never met Craig Jones. I hear I didn't he's either. a hoot. That was the first time I talked to him. He's hilarious. Yeah. He's hilarious. We, yeah, should he's get him hilarious. On, we should get him on the show. Sure. Yeah. Anytime. I'm sure when he's back, I'll, I'll ask him if he wants to do it. Yeah, especially especially about... with, with this stuff circling. Yeah, I, 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 I went to his page the other day before before I did the the Menace and the Man show, and I was going through his stuff. It's a whole, that video he made of Gabby on the stripper pole. It's shit is hilarious. <laughs> Wait, what is that? He made a video of him like going to a strip club, and and he had he, he like spliced in some photos of uh, Gabby doing like pole fitness yeah, stuff. Yeah, because she yeah she does pole dance she does pole dancing. Yeah, and he's like he's got money. <laughs> he's just. <laughs> And then he like he like creeps out of the out of the strip club like as if he's like like disgusted with himself. Yeah. Like he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's a is funny it like dude. a like a like a well edited video or is it like gar- kind of garbagey? Uh, it's 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 all right. It's not. Okay. It's, it's not funny. like a it's, it's funny, not like though. a Chimera Coffee production. But it's, yeah, you know, it's not like the professional stuff that Frankie does. But yeah, you know, that's what I'm talking. It has about. that. It has the same comedic quality. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You can't match your production thing. value though. You know. I know you pull out all the stops and you fucking you fly uh, drones into into the river, you know, to try to get your stops and <laughs> do everything the, that you need to do. The right angle to get the media. Dude, um, talking about those videos, do you know that? Listen to this. The other day, we released a newsletter that had. Have you guys seen that video where Theo and I are at the coffee fields and blessing, like is it, He's like one of those native cannibals. Yeah. And he chases us with like a chicken. Uh huh. And supposedly, like, he kills us. No, Gary, have I, you seen I, that? I, I see that? But just the concept sounds amazing to me. Dude, yeah. It, yeah it's, it's pretty funny. So, this guy, he, he, this, this was all mostly his idea, by the way. He, he tosses a chicken at my Somehow head. Somehow I don't believe that, but okay. So, he, he actually hit me with a chicken on the head. Um, <laughs> so listen to this. We, uh, we had like a funny little, um, uh, a funny newsletter saying like we were at the coffee field and this happened and and like uh, we go to great lengths to get like uh, some of the coffee 
Uh, we even got attacked by like a, a native cannibal, right? Mm-hmm. Dude, we got we got a a response from this Karen chick saying that she That's what I was she, waiting for. she compared her video um, with George Floyd. Like, how is that any different from you being the cops? Like, you guys are so racist, blah blah blah. And I was like, what the who, fuck? That did, totally who played who played that, the cannibal? The blessing did. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, I see. yeah no, see. Gary, he's dressed like literally, and he's got like a loincloth. Yeah. He's dressed. Dude, he like, brought he brought pretty, over pretty he bad, brought honestly. over his costume. He brought over like a, lo- a loincloth. I mean, okay, like African. So let's let's just he talk for just that. a minute about the tribe of people who were known to be cannibalistic. I want to say it might have been the Caribbean tribe or something like that. That it was somewhere in the Caribbean that was mm-hmm. well known for being a cannibalistic people, like. Dude, that tribe was probably mostly black. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't really see what the issue is with having somebody. But did you hear? Like, did you hear what Frankie said? It was a Karen who reached out. She doesn't know anything know, about the Caribbean. It's just the like, Caribbean, fuck, the three man, day are so fucking, tribe. Yeah, she yeah. like she like came at us saying that it was distasteful with like the the climate now and nowadays. It's an actual historical fucking thing like that, that we shouldn't used to be go pushing on. Pushing that message, blah blah blah, and I was like, dude, I thought I would. Ju- I mean, it was something that was funny. Like it was Blessing's idea. It wasn't even like he brought it. He brought his costume over and said, like, let's do this shit. Well, he makes videos like that all the time. I'm, all the time. I'm sorry, sorry videos like that. I'm sorry it wasn't an Asian tribe that was known for eating people, man. I don't know what what you want from me. Oh, that sounds like just, Asian hate. You want us to? Right? You want to rewrite? You want to rewrite history? Like I just don't understand. What's the point going is, on. it doesn't matter. Even if it, even if they were Asian, they would. It, it's like the Karen would have come down on them. And, and it's a fucking comedy sketch about something that's it's not even real. Like it's just mind blowing, bro. Well, I mean, from from like the car- the comments that you guys probably get from like stupid shit that you post or anything, like you you've probably gotten some some comments like like out of left field or some people being total idiots or not. I remember. Yes, I remember one Gary time. Probably more than Gary, that. definitely, but <laughs> for sure, because I'm a little bit uh. I'm a little bit racier, perhaps, maybe yeah. than Chris. Definitely. Chris's public yeah. image. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pretty so, Chris is PG. So one He's time, I'm Disney making, image. One time, I'm making fun of Damien. Okay, Damien's like, uh, he he trains with me uh, in jujitsu and MMA. He was. Um, he's Meyer. probably probably spends the most time training under John in MMA uh, as uh, other than me, right? So, because uh, he's one of my main training partners, so. Damien, one time I'm making fun of him and I where does super he fight, Gary? what's that? Where does he fight? He doesn't yet. He doesn't oh, okay. yet. He's been training for like two years. He okay. basically started a little bit after me, like maybe six months after me. Okay. And then, uh, you, you know, he's very skilled. We just haven't really, we are just talking now about kind of getting him involved, um, with either an amateur promotion or a pro promotion. So, um, anyway, so I superimpose Damien's face on a person in a fairy costume. Okay, a man in a fairy costume. So an adult man <laughs> in a fairy costume mm-hmm. now has Damien's face. Okay, I immediately get called out by someone for being homophobic, and I'm just like, time out for a fucking second. So they I don't know, know you, obviously. Time out. Okay. <laughs> Listen, you, you, okay, you deciding that you would like to have sex with men is completely independent. From you deciding that you're going to wear a fairy costume, okay? okay? Those are two completely different things. Now, they very well may be associated with each other. It may be within gay culture for somebody to wear a fairy costume or something. I don't know. I don't know enough about gay culture for me to, to say one way or the other. But, like, to insinuate that somehow by putting – by laughing at the idea of my friend's face – on an adult male wearing a fairy costume that that's somehow homophobic. It's like, no dude, it's fucking funny because he's wearing a fairy costume. Seeing any adult male in really almost any costume of a mythical creature would probably be pretty fucking funny. Particularly a fairy though, because it seemed to be, it's seen as a very feminine-esque kind of, uh, of, uh, mythical creature, right? So it is a funny, it is a funny thing to superimpose your friend's face. Like, I don't understand where people's minds go. It's like, how is this hating on gay people? I just don't. And and, and you, of, of all people, Gary, 
Like you are like the least homophobic dude. Like when you're gangbang, you you clink swords all the time. You don't give a fuck. <laughs> Dude, you don't give he, a fuck. He literally Speaking angles for it. It's it's not, it's not it's not by accident. <laughs> Speaking of that and Teo, um, do, do you know what Teo messaged the guys in Boston? No. What what no? did he say? So when I was what, in, what guys? I guess what he guys? knows like the what guys? The BGD fanatics guys. Oh, like he. Oh yeah, he knows them. Yeah, because he was what? he lives there, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he lives like in Salem. It's yeah. like. It's like 40 minutes away. So uh, he messaged those guys. He goes, hey, ask Gary about the time that he uh, that he banged that like that 10 out in the Dominican Republic while he was hanging out. (laughs) (laughs) I'm dead. Chris, were you ever did I ever tell that story with you on the I don't know if we ever ever spoke about it. I don't think. Yeah. I'm so sure. I'll tell a I'll tell a version of the story that I think we can put uh, on and that you won't have to delete. I'll do my best. So like we're all hanging out there, you know, barbecuing. And, uh, what's that? Barbecuing. This yeah. is in DR. We're hanging out barbecuing in DR, and um, I'm there, Gina Scarangella, and uh, Fr- uh, Frank and Teo, and a couple of their guys that work uh, in the, the in the coffee plant, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're, we're having like a little barbecue get together or whatever. And at the time, Gina, uh, was, had just broken up with her boyfriend or something. Okay. And Gina's a very, uh, fit, athletic, uh, you know, beautiful woman. And, uh, she's currently married, I think, uh, and has a kid with somebody. I, I don't know if they're married, but they, at least they have a kid with each other. Yeah. So, uh, but at this t- at this point in time, she had just broken up with a boyfriend, whatever. So I was thinking in my head, like, oh, man, maybe I'll try to hit on her or whatever, but I don't want to make it weird. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to, like, you know, she's on a trip here in the Dominican Republic or whatever. Like, unless unless basically she throws herself at me or something, I'm not going to, like, really make a move. You know what I mean? And it became apparent she was, like, talking to her ex and stuff like that throughout the trip. So I was like, ah, you know, I'm hands off. I'm deciding that this is this is a no-go. So we're just going to be friends. You know what I mean? Great. No problem. So, uh, but then I'm like, okay, well, you know, if that, if that's not going to be on the menu here, like I gotta, I'm in the Dominican Republic. Like I gotta fucking, I gotta find something, you know what I mean? I gotta find some chick to talk to, right? Partake in the local talent. Yeah. So I tell, I tell Frankie and Teo, I was like, Hey man, you know, uh, could you guys, could you guys maybe like get some chicks to the, at the party or like something like that? Like, can you invite a friend over, you know, maybe, maybe one of your, maybe one of your coworkers like knows somebody. So like, like Frankie and Taylor are like, yeah, we really don't know anybody that lives around here that like to introduce you to, like, I, we think you're out of luck. But then like the coworker overhears me having the conversation. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, this. I'm going to handle it. <laughs> so, so the coworker like makes a couple phone calls and this chick comes over and like, Bro, they, it, let's it was say like, this. It was like she was they, far. They she was the door. far from a ten. Okay. <laughs> this, guy just, this guy, this guy, just dropped a grenade on the door. Ding dong. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> when I opened the door, I'm like, mm, Gary. You know what? You know Gary, what? I'm Gary, gonna send her that? home, dog. Frankie, Frankie like, actually tried to no. shut the door once he opened it, but I, I clawed my way back to opening the door. Gary, you know what's great? That guy looked at you and was like, No, no, I got, I got this. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> dude, Gary's like downing a burger and he sees this chick and he's like, I got this. I'm going to do this shit for America. With he, one was, bite. Bro, he was wearing, he was wearing board shorts with like an American flag. I'm like, I'm doing this for America. <laughs> <laughs> a true patriot. Like, Frankie's literally looking at me. Like when this girl comes over, Frankie's literally looking at me like, you're not like you're, you're not right. Like. Like you have self-respect, right? Like you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, when, you wouldn't do Gar- that. When Gary starts leaving with this chick, I start tearing up. Gary, and no. So Gary. Gary. I would be tearing back. up the other way. Like, oh, what a good man. So, so, so I'm, uh, Gary. she speaks zero, zero English, by the way. None. Like I can't say hello. Like there's just no understanding of any English. Now, thankfully, I don't really speak conversational Spanish. Like I'm not very good at putting sentences together like quickly or anything like that. But I, I can f- do it enough that I can kind of like 
put something together that makes sense that, you know, I can have a little bit of a conversation. It's not going to sound good. I probably sound like a two year old trying to speak Spanish, probably worse, I'm guessing. Um, but so I'm speaking to her. She's reacting well and everything. I'm like, okay, all right, I think I can make this happen. Right. <laughs> so, uh, now Gina sees this happening. She was having like a conversation with her ex or something. Gina sees this happening and is like, I can just tell, like, I don't think we ever had a conversation about it. Like, I don't think Gina ever <laughs> actually said anything, but I can just tell like the look of disappointment in her face. So she's like, she's probably thinking to herself, like, man, I told him I broke up with my boyfriend. Why, why wouldn't he talk to me? Like, <laughs> like why? he didn't even hit on me. He didn't even hit on me. Like, didn't even try. And like, he and, like, just that's goes what after, he's bringing home. He goes after this monster. <laughs> like, Why? <laughs> Dude, I was like, Gary, so don't anyway, do it. You know, Come I, back. I, I did a good deed, man. You know, I uh, I I gave somebody the best night night of their life, and uh, you know, that's that's all there is to be said about that. If I had a hat, I would tip it to you, because <laughs> we actually we outnumber Frank on this this situation. Because hey, listen, <laughs> there's tens Gary. and there's twos, and it's just it's, it's Gary comes Gary comes back to the barbecue to, to eat some more burgers. Fucking and just nobody can look me in the eye. Not a single person <laughs> is able to look me in the eye afterwards. I'm like, hey guys, how's it going? They're like, oh, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, weather yeah, great. Good. We're probably just going to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go take a shower. Okay, we're like, gonna go shower. Like easily, easily everybody at the party was more distraught emotionally from the experience than I was, and I was the one partaking in the experience. And Gary, Gary had like we were in the in the hot tub, and Gary. Gary was fucking chiseled and shit, and it was like, dude, it was such a mismatch. Can't yeah, can't Gary stress that. Enough. He was well outside my weight class. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Gary's a warrior. He gets he gets it done. Several several weight classes above me. But, <laughs> several. You know, it's never dude, stopped me. It's never it stopped looked, me in, it, either in combat yeah, or, you're, or you're in, strong uh, for your weight, so it's okay. You, just, you can you can go you can compete outside your weight class. It That's looked right. when right. it looked I'm like prepared. Hoist Hoist Gracie fighting Akabono. That okay. sumo sumo dude. <laughs> What what is that called when they take the all the other weight classes and have them have them compete? Absolute. Absolute. You're the yeah, open you're, class. Yeah, you're open open class. <laughs> yeah. That was an absolute matchup. It's fine. You still won. Uh, Frank thinks you lost, but I I, 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 I still you. look at it as I still look at it as a net great experience. The entire trip as well as that included. It's awesome. good for the podcast at the very least. Yeah. It's all about the sport. I, mean, I do I do have a newfound respect for you, Gary. I'll tell you that much. They they couldn't look me in the eye, not because they were ashamed, but because they 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 felt as though the presence of a god was among them. <laughs> they're like they're like I can't make direct eye contact. Presence of greatness. Away. Gary they came down tell, with an aura about him. They could tell that there was a man in their presence that could do things that they were not capable of. You know, <laughs> like you're, you're you're basically a myth, a myth on earth. Like, yes. I've read stories about this kind of guy. I didn't really know. I didn't know he was true. <laughs> the type of guy that just takes down trolls. He's just a grenade killer. Slays the dragon. Yeah, he's, he's a grenade eater. He's just you need those guys around you. One hundred percent. Fucking. Did you guys see uh Dylan Dennis drunk, drunk on that podcast, the Flagrant Two with Andrew Schultz? I saw Schultz. bits and pieces because Gordon was all fucking up in arms and like sending shade his way and shit. I saw that. But oh yeah, because they spoke about. They spoke about Gordon on that podcast. Yeah, yeah. So then he just, whenever Gordon is even remotely mentioned in a negative light, he just goes on a fucking rampage. So he's probably been nonstop posting about him ever since. So it seems like it seems like uh, this kid went on a like a one week bender in Miami. Oh yeah. Yeah, he had no voice. He he was like. Who is this? He was he, he was kind of like Dylan Dennis. Mm. Have you heard of him? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, I think he was in line to fight one of these guys, right? Like, J Jack yeah, Jake he was just, he was, uh, he was Jake's first pick, but he had like knee surgery, so he couldn't do it. He looked like he was coked up, and, like still drunk oh, yeah. from like partying. Yeah, it wasn't a good look. He didn't have a, his voice was raspy, but he obviously looked like he was fucked up. Sure, coke is making a big comeback, huh? Jesus, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's making it's, a big comeback like, on social media. It's uh, really popular these days. What are you guys doing this weekend? There's a fucking huge fight. Um, three title fights from the UFC. Masvidal, Usman, who you got there? Usman again. Yeah, Usman's, I think if anything, it's going to be worse. Yeah, 
Yeah, I agree. You think there's so? Certain, yeah, there's certain times when a guy, when a guy has a fight with somebody and then they have a rematch, where you can just tell that like the better fighter is only going to come back and beat them worse because they they now know there's even less of a threat than mm-hmm. they thought. And I mm-hmm, think yeah. that's that's what Usman's going to Usman's going to go into this next fight even more confident than he did before, and he's going to know things about Masvidal maybe that he didn't know prior, and it's, I just think it's going to get even worse. What about the other way around? I don't, I just don't, I don't think in the amount just of time not on the allotted. Level. He's just not on the level. Yeah. He's, not, he's not the same. In the amount same of time capacity. allotted, I don't, okay. I don't think he could have gotten that, that much better. And then uh, Whaley versus Rose Namajunas. Oh, Rose. Oh, Rose. Rose. Yeah, yeah oh, that's going to be a good one. Right. And yeah. then, I and like then and then Shevchenko is the the third, I think, title fight, and she's fighting against the um, that Brazilian chick that's like that used to be champion, that's like um, built built like a fucking Jackson? tank. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. Super jacked. Yeah. Crap, I forgot. That should be good. That should actually be good. Yeah, those are gonna be awesome fights. I think. I mean, I think those fights will be probably better than the Mazaval Usman yeah. fight. More competitive, at least. Chris, so did you partake in any spring break activities over in uh, Florida? Florida gets um, nuts, man. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean, I mean I've been training, so I, I kind of stay away from all that. But, uh, yeah, they, they shut down South Beach. Uh, they they reenacted a curfew and everything. Like, they were, it was literally, it, it was bedlam like the apocalypse. In the street. Yeah, it was <laughs> wild. It was good. There were so many people in the streets. Like, it was as if COVID has never existed ever. Like, it was just ever. literally wall-to-wall bodies. People on top of cars. It was, uh, yeah. America's yeah, back. I mean, it, it wouldn't be this way if only fucking two places in the fucking country were open. You it's know, two free that's, the, that's, that's the nation. issue. That's the issue that fucking like Puerto Rico is running into is like, hey, now people can only travel to select destinations to vacation. And Puerto Rico is one of them because it's within the United States. And it's like without going, you know, jumping through hoops, like obviously they could travel internationally, but then they're going to be expected to do quarantines and all different kinds of things. And like, man, it's just like when we started with the lockdowns and we started shutting down certain businesses, it funnels everybody into one place and it has the exact opposite impact that it was intended in the first place. So Gary, do you see like a lot of tourists over in Dorado? Uh, Not, not as much in Dorado. I mean, Dorado does have uh, like a tourism industry. I -hmm. think normally under, you know, pre COVID, like it probably was a lot bigger than, uh, than it is currently. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause I think a lot of the guys that, a lot of the, like tech industry and stuff like that that comes down here for like Bitcoin and things that settle in this area. Yep. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? Whenever we go to the touristy spots, like because those are the only spots to go out, out at night, really. Yep. You know, if you're going to go like uh, if you're going to go out to the bars or clubs or whatever, um, mm-hmm. all those spots are pa- like packed with tourism for sure. Like it gets it gets bigger and bigger every time I go out. Like there's, there's more stuff, but now they're, they're enacting like crazy curfews and stuff. So they're going to, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot and kill and kill their tourism industry. But I, you know, it's like Chris said, like, it's probably not on the level of Miami, but it's kind of getting a little out of hand with the amount of people and like kind of what everything that's going on. So, you know, um, I guess, I guess they see it as a, as a necessity, but there's going to be a lot of unhappy like travelers. Cause like, you know, this stuff changes on a whim you know, yeah. these curfews and things. And yeah, it's like, you, know, you, like book, you book your flight and then all of a sudden yeah. like you get you here a and then flight, you a hotel, you think this is going to be a vacation. And now all of a sudden fucking everything closes at 8 PM, Yep. you know, and it's and like, also oh, the, ho- the hotel amenities, like there's so, there's so much less to do in hotels. I'm so pissed about that. Like I can't go to the gym. I can't go to the pool. I can't go to the spa. Like I was in Vegas and like the spas weren't open. That's my favorite thing to do in Vegas. Like, sure. It's just not, it's not the what? same. When yeah. you, those Vietnamese spas, Chris, <laughs> me sucky sucky the soapy long time <laughs> oh i like i like the the the, the fat russian guy spas oh <laughs> uh oh he wait chris is the, um, chris is all about steam, that grip steam, strength he needs the, the steam rooms he needs the grip strength and he needs the texture of the of the hair coming out of the knuckles of the <laughs> russian, russian guy. i also i like i like From the women uh, i like when there's like a little bit of you know padding wow. on the uh, it's rough a little callus padding on the uh, hand there <laughs> Makes me feel alive. Nice. Chris gets like um, those huge Russian chicks named Olga that mm. grab him and just like manipulate nice. the fuck out of him. Sometimes I watched a porn like that the other day. Come where, here, like, some chick, like, picked up a dude and flipped him upside down. 
It yeah. turned me on for a second until she started twisting his nuts. And I was like, <laughs> no, I can't have this. Can't have this. Uh, <laughs> or step, or have you ever seen them when they step on him with the, with the high heels? Like, oh, little, or right, when they like, or kick, like him. Kick, kick him in the balls? Oh, oh, dude, oh brutal. my God. Yeah, all three. You can see all three of us just got a stomachache. <laughs> it's like, but you know that there's got to be somebody in our lives that is into that shit, and we just don't know it. Like they show up in their fucking suit and their briefcase and shit, and they talk to us like they're a normal dude, and then and then fucking once a week they go to a fucking dominatrix cave in some yeah. sex dungeon and get their nuts stomped on with a fucking bag over their head and shit. <laughs> and they wear a gas mask with a tube have, connected to a girl's ass like and just pee on their face. farting into her, his mouth, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, t- did, do you, do you, did you guys ever see that documentary with Pat McAfee? Yeah. Oh, no. man. With the so girls this, sitting? So, you, you know, you, you remember the antivirus, the McAfee? Uh, Gary? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he, he, he was the one that invented it. And um, I guess like he sold, he later sold the company for like a lot he, of money, he, and then he, he retired. He invented antiviruses for antivirus software for for computers. Like, right, first right. Person to do it. So, so this guy, but he was like he was so weird. So weird. this dude moved to Belize, right? Okay. And he had chicks sit on hammocks that have like, um, you know, they have holes in them, the hammocks. Sure. And he used to um, lay down under the hammocks. And he used to make them take dumps through the holes in his face. Like, that's that's what, how he... Uh, that's how he got off. He got off, bro. That There's a good Gary, documentary. Is Gary's that on- computer, that was so dirty, Gary's computer just froze. <laughs> no, he's just, he's taking that in. He's just, he's, yeah. it's, he's not even frozen. He's just... <laughs> He's analyzing it. He's, he's processing that information. Like the Terminator, just processing information right now. The, the <laughs> gears, the gears are, are like going forward I'm and back. So, I'm so upset. I missed that. <laughs> Can you guys see me, or is it just my me recording now? Uh, yeah, I think, you're frozen. Oh, but... You're frozen, dude. But I think I. Oh, okay. Here we go. My my fucking my fucking computer just decided to restart. It's like, oh yeah, Windows is restarting. Oh fucking awesome. Thanks, guys. Jesus. Well, <laughs> anyway, he's shitting. Some chicks are shitting through hammocks into his mouth or something. Yeah, yeah. To, in, no. like his his face. That's how he like got off. So here's a here's the thing. Like, I think some of this stuff is just derived from like whatever weird fucking childhood stimuli or fucking psychosis that you or develop. Trauma. Like, yeah. But but mm. also, I think in, there's a certain element to it. Like a guy like that who is probably like an exceptionally wealthy dude. And smart. It's like you get to a point. I think some of these guys where like, you know, ev- this, this whole world that is not available to the average man is available at their fingertips where like they have this, this crazy amount of money where they could pretty much get any chick to do like anything for them that it probably gets to a point where they're like having fucking orgies with like, you know, six or seven different chicks. And then they're just like, man, it's just not enough now. You know, like, for I don't sure. care how hot they are. I don't care if there's eight different chicks in the room. Like, we got to spice this up. I need one of them to fucking shit my mouth through a hammock. They need like, more. Yeah, like, there, there's, like, this... It's a, it's a dangerous thing, man, you know? Yeah, I mean, this guy did have, like... um, So he had, like, a bunch of chicks just living with him from Belize. That and he they would, said like, they were like, yeah, he doesn't off. have sex with us. He just makes us... Do, and there was, like, there's multiple, multiple shit. girls being like, oh, he just yeah. makes us do, you know, the thing. And they're like, what thing? And then they all explain the same fucking thing. I think wow. you're going to... Gary, you have a lot of things to watch now. Yeah, that, that's actually you that's have... actually a pretty good documentary because there's like a murder a documentary mystery involved. There's a documentary in it. about a dude who's getting who's eating shit through a hammock. Yep. Oddly enough, that's a very small portion of the documentary. Ooh, I don't even <laughs> want to watch a fucking documentary now. I want to watch just a documentary specifically about that. I want them to get so in depth, it's like a fucking Discovery Channel episode, and they're like watching the the shit in slow motion just split through the fucking hammock into his mouth and like watch as the fucking the feces like you want you want to know what the girl ate basically exactly you you like what he feeds well, them gary like... if you if you want to see that you should you should uh google two girls one cup i've, I've never seen that dude the first I've time i saw that, that i i would like i threw up in my mouth like it was so disgust it's like the most horrendous thing that you could possibly see is that still on the internet like i, 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 I would have never seen that you, you can't get rid of Don't something that, that goes that viral 
Yeah, don't once, look it up. Once something like that goes that viral, <laughs> don't look it up. It's gonna haunt you for the rest of your life. Hey Gary, what am I gonna do as soon as we're done? I'm looking that up. Dude, it, it, this yeah. is like two girls, one cup is like it for me. The fucking clown yeah. always comes out at night and it haunts me for the rest of my life. The two girls <laughs> in one cup. <laughs> fucking 20 years later. 20 years later, the fucking thing still haunts me. Frankie's just sitting there playing with his kid. The kid starts playing with a little bit of Play-Doh and he just instantly, his brain just goes to two girls, one cup. Like, oh, yeah, I start <laughs> getting like fucking uh, PTSD and fucking <laughs> flashbacks. <laughs> Stop it. Put that in Stop, it. Stop it. Stop Don't it. Stop it. Stop it. Daddy, are you okay? Stop like, it. Pop, papa? Papa? No more Play Doh. We're not allowed yeah. to play with Play Doh in the house anymore. Get me my Valium. <laughs> then your kid's going to grow up with a Play Doh. I think uh, that's a good note to end on. <laughs> All right. Hi, All right. bitches. Hi, right, gentlemen. Great talking to you guys. Love you guys. For See you no later. Man. No, no man. man. No man. Just a flesh wound, just a flesh wound, just a flesh wound.